Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today is a director, screenwriter, cinematographer, and actress. She's the director of the feature horror films The BC Butcher and Cuddly Toys. She appeared in the Killers music video for Caution, and she played Blue in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino. I had the pleasure of working with her this past year. Please welcome Kansas Bowling. Hi. Kansas. It's so good to see you again. I'm so glad we got to work together. I remember meeting you years back. You were just getting ready to release the BC Butcher. We were, we had been like rolling in the same crowd for a little bit. We're at Warner Brothers. You give me the flyer and I'm like, wow, I had no idea. And then you had this huge premiere at the Egyptian theater. You were so respected by everyone and you've continued this great career of yours as a filmmaker. I'm really glad that we got to work together this past year. I felt like things come full circle and I'm so glad to be celebrating your journey. Well, thank you, Cash. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we got to work together recently, too. I'd see you around Hollywood. We had mutual friends. And then when you invited me to the premiere, that's when, you know, you were getting a lot of attention and press. I was hearing your backstory and I was like, we're so much alike in a lot of ways. I mean, I was like, you were given a eight millimeter camera at 13. I was given a camcorder at 14. I was doing scenes with my brother and my friends. And then you were recreating scenes from Tarantino's movies like Kill Bill. I was, yeah. you know, I guess Pulp Fiction was my era. So I feel like we both had that shared passion for filmmaking and you continued it within the horror genre. Yeah, I, I just love horror movies. So I wanted to start there. Now the films I do, they're still somewhat horror movies. I'm just not in like a straightforward way. The movie I just did, Cuddly Toys, is about your teenage daughters being up to no good. <laughs> and then this new one that I'm, I'm doing, I'm filming right now, is uh, it's true crime stuff. I don't want to give away too much right now, but it's, a, it's about 10 different things true crime cases that actually happen that are sort of interwoven together uh but my film that is completed cuddly toys it's going to come out at the end of this year with a cool company it took a really long time to find someone to put it out but uh it had like a festival premiere last year it was Almost, in new york right yeah yeah in new york at cinema village at the new people's cinema club cuddly toys everyone keep your eyes out for that. It's going to be pretty cool. One of the things I really wanted to point out about you as well is we talked about your early passion. I think you were 18 or 19 when BC Butcher came out, but you've had a steady career and that's what I've always admired about you. I mean, you knew what you wanted to do at a young age and you never half-assed anything. I mean, I made films when I was in my teens. We joke about it now because we would take my camcorder and we were doing at the time, I guess we were really into like Pulp Fiction and Basketball Diaries. So we were making kind of this movie about gangs and pimps. And we had like, I mean, Michael Schumann from Queens of the Stone Age was in one. And then we had actually, we, we, had, we almost got arrested for this one. We were in an alley and we, we we did a bad thing. We spray painted guns black. We're like 13, 14 years old. <laughs> so we dressed up Dylan as this pimp and he's supposed to be ripping us off. And then the cops showed up because they thought that we were a real gang. And then, uh, but I talked my way out of it. We had a screening and a premiere and then, you know, I kind of went a different route for a bit. You know, I, st I got into acting. I went to college, did communications, and then I got more on the agency and producing side. Then I got back into the creative side. But you knew exactly what you wanted to do. And like your first attempt at a film, you did BC Butcher. You get the attention of Lloyd Kaufman from Trauma. You've gone from one project to the next. You've been at it for a bit, but you're still young. You still have this passion. You keep doing films. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I have these ideas in my head and need to get them out. But... <laughs> got to deal with the craziness of other people that make movies and stuff so <laughs> I know that's the thing too I mean I did this movie Jack and Cocaine that was like kind of my first step back after being in more on the producing and agency side for a bit and then I was like you know forget this I want to be more creative and that's around the time when I met you so I do attribute kind of my new renaissance era you're one of the people that's involved in it oh. and yeah, no, we have a connection, girl. You know it. And then yeah. you know, I, was, I was hanging out with like Courtney Palm and some other, my um, mother friend Valerie Brandy, who we just had on the show, who were just, they were making independent films. I was meeting a lot of people at festivals. I did this movie on Dateable John, and it took a few years for that one to get distributed. And it was one of those things, you know, I'd be out or promoting something else. And this clip of me and Shannon Doherty got out. And then it was like, oh, when's this? I'm like, I, I don't know. And then, but luckily we got in with Stadia Media and it, kind of happened right around the same time when I had a another movie with Tom Arnold coming because he was in it too called mm -hmm. Hollywood.com that my childhood friend Mika Borum directed so it's it's interesting like those kind of chapters that come in and then when it finally finds a home yeah yeah it's um if if you're making a movie that doesn't have a, a real genre it's hard to 
get someone to put it out. <laughs> what really inspires you to want to tell a story? I mean, even when you're coming up with a concept and like, this is what's on my mind. This is the scene I want to do. Like, what's your process? Just when I'm writing, I just always want to tell an honest story. If, if you don't really think about it and you just write, it'll all sort of be natural and honest and parts of you um, that you put into some other stories. I like to pull from things that have actually happened too, because I just think there's so many things in the world that have happened that are far more interesting than these works of fiction that are coming out and that people have just never made films about. I just feel like a lot of people tell the same stories over and over again. And I like to tell things that haven't been told or people are afraid to tell and then sort of interject my own personal things into the writing. <laughs> I've always respected you and your work and your career choices. And I'm with you where I like more underground, low budget movies as well too. And I do find a lot of heart in those stories. What are so like certain elements that you want to bring out or like a story that you feel needs to be told? Basically stories about victims rather than the perpetrators. You know, 99% of the time is the other way around in true crime films. These women's stories that have never been told. I just love telling stories about small towns and American history, whether it's super old or super recent. Just, I'm very inspired by American lore. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Speaking of like American history, you recently did a movie about the Manson murders, which was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I know Tarantino was one of your early influences as a kid. And then, so what was it like fast forward and it's been story outside of a superhero franchise. It told a story about Hollywood. It changes history in a very Tarantino way. And what was it like the uh, process of booking the role, finding out you had it and then being on set? Oh, it, it was, it was crazy. It was like a dream come true. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I still kind of forget sometimes that I was in it. So it's, it's just really <laughs> funny. <laughs> it's like, well, that's crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, it was just really fun, really fun experience. And um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. great. It was, uh, Quentin's awesome. Brad Pitt was awesome. I uh, made some friends that I still hang out with on, on that set. So yeah. That's so cool. Growing up, it was, I remember like Pulp Fiction. I was always like recreating scenes from Back to the Future and movies when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And then there was this moment when, I mean, I know like I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but like when around the time when uh, Pulp Fiction made its mark, it was like everyone, I think it was like in sixth grade. It was, a, it was a little bit after it came out. And then like everyone in my class had seen it. And then my mom was like, oh, well, we got to, and then, but that was like me and my mom had a moment when I was like 11 watching Pulp Fiction and just really kind of bonding over film. And then from there, it was like, then I started like, you know, I saw The Godfather for the first time, Taxi Driver and got into like Scorsese and all these other movies. So I feel like that was really like a time when me and my mom and dad bonded uh, over movies. I know you got asked one time, like, you know, how, how did you see Pulp Fiction when you were seven? And I'm kind of like, one of the first movies I saw was Beverly Hills Cop. And I didn't realize what was going on half the time or all the <laughs> words that were happening. Get the fuck out of here. Somebody yeah, yeah, no, I had a similar experience at watching his movies really young too, and that just got me really hyped on movies. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, not not just his movies, just all sorts of movies, but his movies were in there, like a mm -hmm. uh, creep show and things like that were really exciting to me. <laughs> Mars Attacks. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm old enough to have seen that in the theater. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like still one of my favorite movies. I love oh, Mars yeah. Attacks. It's, it's definitely the best Vegas movie ever. I yeah. think we actually, we snuck into Scream and then we saw Mars Attacks. <laughs> really? That's awesome. <laughs> 90s flashback. <laughs> Another movie of like growing up for me was Boogie Nights. And that was around the time yeah. when I got my camcorder. And I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. So seeing all these spots or like having friends who had moved away said, oh my God, I watched Boogie Nights. And that reminded me of where we grew up. And I just remembered like even like Ms. Donuts and other places around. We were always like looking for the locations from where they shot things from Boogie Nights. And then yeah. <laughs> and even that movie with Dylan and Michael, where it was called Lost Boys, B O. Y Z because we were gangsters and stuff. We had, we had a boogie nights element. I know we were bonding over a Paul Thomas Anderson and licorice pizza while we were filming our movie. Yeah, I love licorice pizza. I saw it two days in a row. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I saw it the opening day also. So um yeah, licorice pizza is so amazing. Um yeah, but I saw Boogie Nights when I was a little kid too. I love Paul Thomas Anderson. He's one of the best working directors. Oh, absolutely. I know from there it was like a Boogie Nights, then Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love. I mean, I could go down the list and that was another when it came out, that was one of those things like my mom and I know. I remembered seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in the theater when it first came out and then I was like, "Mom, we, we like this is a movie you and I got to go see." And she's she wasn't sure because she knows everyone knows 
the real story about Sharon Tate and the man. So she's like, will I be able to sit? I mean, I, I, I'm like, mom, you're, you're going to be happy at the end of this movie. Don't worry about it. That's, it's not what you think. So don't even worry about it. So she was, you know, and we both walked out very much enjoying it. And then she was the one who said, we got to see Licorice Pizza. And that was another one because it took place in the Valley. That was more her time in the seventies. That was before my time, but there was still that connection when there's those places you visited. And I always liked with Paul Thomas Anderson, because even in Boogie Nights, it is about the adult entertainment industry, but so much of the brilliance is just those dialogues between characters when the camera's just panning through, like at the pool party or mm -hmm. just even that, oh gosh, we actually recreated the Ray Had Jackson scene. I don't know why, but we were just into that with the Alfred Molina where he was portraying Eddie Nash and the guy was throwing the firecrackers. That was the drug deal yeah. gone bad. So, I mean, we were like 13, 14 recreating those scenes on our camp. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> I am a fan of the killers. I was really surprised. You, you kind of just popped out because I remember when Once Upon a Time came out, you were always in the trailer. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's Kansas. And then when the killer's caution came out, your, your picture, it's basically the poster on YouTube. Like there she is again. Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we filmed that like a couple weeks before the world shut down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a, it was a fun shoot there's like a short film attached to the music video too they cut it into like two different music videos also so i've been playing the short film and two other videos and uh yeah. <laughs> the pandemic was really one of those eras too. I mean, I created this dome that I'm in right now. I just didn't, I didn't know where I was. I thought we were going to have like a two week vacation. Two weeks goes into two months. I know. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I was saying to my friends, like, see you in a couple months. Yep. Yeah. And then everything <laughs> closes down and then it was, but no, so it was, I'm just glad that you we able to get that done and then the video comes out during the oh, oh yeah yeah I, I was able to focus a lot on editing during the first few months of lockdown so that was good <laughs> That's one of my passions too, even with the show. I was getting into podcasts. They were doing it on like Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And then we ended up we're like, you know, let's do a show. My dad got me that sign for my birthday that year. So it was like oh, kind of a sign like, okay, yeah, we got to get this thing going. And then it was a way for us to uh, communicate with each other. And it's just been really fascinating to just have different conversations with people whose careers I admire, just other artists that I've grown up with, or even just someone who I haven't met who has a movie coming out and then they hit us up and be like, Cash, you want to talk? It's like, great. And I just like really uh, connecting with artists. So for me, it was like really therapeutic uh, during that time. And then it was I kind of tapped into something that I didn't know I had. And then, but with me, I love editing as well too. I mean, I, I edited Jack and cocaine and even with this, the joy oh, is cool. like, yeah. I mean, that was a fun, that was a whole other journey in itself. Cause I was like kind of the first like feature film starring and then first jumping back into acting after a bit. And then like with this show, it's just, you know, I was like, I was editing some old home movies or I was making the transfers. And then it's, it was cool to be like, wow, there's like these histories or I remember these, stories and then um being able to like throw clips over things like that yeah yeah I'm, I'm very particular about my editing too i i have like editing inspiration movies and uh i there's a very particular style i i like and i strive for when cuddly toys comes out everyone will know what i'm talking about <laughs> not really with any of my other stuff well my, my music videos and stuff too but um yeah editing is a it's an often overlooked art. Definitely. There is that thing about when you're editing and you're the scene and you're like, wait, it's just that one little cut, boom. And then like where the music comes in over that, boom. And then it pops out. It's those little things that bring the magic of the film to life. Yeah. You also film on a 16 millimeter primarily. Yeah. Yeah. I have an Aton LTR. That's what mm -hmm. I've been shooting all my stuff on my music videos. And that's what I shot Cuddly Toys on. And that's what I'm shooting this new one on. And what was it about 16 millimeter that intrigued you about, you know, the style or the look? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's, mm -hmm. that's what my movies look like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's how <laughs> it all started. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> While we were filming, there was a movie night that you invited me to, and we watched actually an old favorite of mine, Basketball. Now, <laughs> growing up, South Park, Basketball, I mean, I, that's another one I remember renting it, and that was one of those movies that we all laughed at. So thank you for bringing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are my heroes, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Trey and Matt are just awesome. I love like their take on everything. And I mean, South Park's one of those cartoons that is, it's still so relevant. And I mean, when they take on an issue and they, they have a message, I'm just fascinating, like letting, and even there was that episode and they show how they make a South Park episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're so cool. I hope I get to work with them one day. That'd be magic. I know I'll be Squeak Scolari in one of their movies any day. I'll be the squeak of theirs. <laughs> or I guess it's the human version of Butters. Yeah. <laughs> Butters, that butthole, why? <laughs> totally. 
So you're currently doing this feature film and you go between Nevada and Los Angeles to do your project? Yeah, and I own a movie theater in Nevada that I'm restoring that I'm going to reopen soon. So that keep your eyes out. It's called the Old Glory. Old Glory Theater. Coming soon to the world. Presented by Kansas Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Candice, I do appreciate your time today. Like I said, I met you right when I was kind of having my renaissance when I was coming back and really your success, the, you know, going to your premiere and seeing where your career has gotten. You were someone who I was looking at and saying like, you know, she's doing something. She's She's got something about her. And, you know, you made me one up my game. I mean, I was like, you know what? Kansas is making some stuff happen. Started like going to like some indie film stuff. So I thank you for really being a friend and a support person. And I was really glad that this opportunity came up that we were able to work together the last year. Yeah, thank you, Cash. I'm, I'm I'm really glad too that we were finally able to do something together. So thank you for having me on the podcast. Congratulations with the podcast too. Thank you. I appreciate that, Kansas. Is there anything that you want to shout out to anyone? Everyone look out for Cuddly Toys. Oh, and uh, I just acted in my friend Greg Deliso's movie, Bad Brain, which is going to be really good. So everyone keep your eyes out for that one too. You heard it. Everyone give it up for Kansas Bowling. She's phenomenal. She has cuddly toys coming out very soon. And hopefully you'll get to see a feature film that we both worked on in the next year sometime. Kansas, you're an inspiration. You're amazing. I care about you very much. You've been a great friend to me and you just keep rocking, girl. All right. Thanks, Cash. You rock. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Kansas Bowling today. You are on air with Cash. <laughs>